here is the path that my friend Paul and those who other were camping with him that night. I, I have an idea. I'm almost 100% certain who they were, but I won't say my name because, you know, I've kind of, I've kind of, you know, it's kind of been, it's kind of vague. It's been like probably since the 90s since I've heard this story told. But right, right here, up here, my friend, they, there's a little trail off the logging roads. They would have come down here through this footpath right here. It's all rocks now. And they would have ended up out right here to get to the camping side of Big Rock that uh, that night, that Friday or Saturday night they were camping when the, the spookiness happened to them. So we'll just kind of pick up here where they would have uh, walked to camp. They would have come through here. Handle these rocks a little bit, but the, the trail would have come out right there. And it was just right above here. And you got the first rock right there. That's not Big Rock, but it's a Big Rock sister. And they would have come through here. And like I said in my lower trail video, uh, they've kind of built up the trail more. This used to not be such an embankment. Let's see, Let's see here. It's not such an embankment, but they've built up the trail. Well, it used to be, this embankment used to be flat. There's a flat, sandy beach area that would, with roots, some roots and stuff from trees. But, uh, and it would gently slope down to Big Rock and it's Big Rock's sister to enter the river. So, but they had to come up here. Like I said, this has been built up over the, over the years. But the trail was built up but this had been a gentle slope and when you had come down here it's been a gentle slope down to the rocks and river perfect area for this camp and these rocks right here these rocks were not here they were brought in i believe when they made the trail yeah they were brought in specifically to make the trail but uh yeah they would have come down here and all this right here that I'm standing on would have been Sandy Beach area. It would not have been as boulders here. And there would not have been a climb and would not have been a climb down to get the Big Rock. It would have been, you know, like did gently slope down to Big Rock and then you could easily access it. It's kind of hard to get down here with all my camera gear. Uh, kind of growing up right now, but But that is big, the famous Big Rock. Let's see if I can get down here. Yeah, I believe I can. Hell yeah. Made it. Yep. Sorry for the climb there. But here, here is the big, we're on Big Rock right now. And this would have been the views of camping at Big Rock. You know, as you can see, there would have been a gently flowing river. Uh, straight ahead, there's some rapids you can hear. But it was always a gently flowing river unless it was like a heavy rains. But And then it had gone south towards uh, 278 Bridge and Duck River Hill. But yeah, this is... This is the views you would have gotten camping here. And there used to be, I don't know, just about, say about 50 yards just right down the river, there used to be a tree that was falling across from bank to bank. And you could walk across that thing to get from bank to bank. I never was really great at walking the logs. The best way to get, you know, without having to wade. Just, uh, I'm just gonna put it down here and hopefully right here and just see if we can have what kind of views we can get.
All right, and directly across from us, there used to be a trail on that side that would lead down to, you know, diametrically opposite of where we're standing right now, just across the bank. And there was a trail on that side, and there was several times that we would be on our side of the river, right down here, you know, fishing, swimming, jumping off of it, wading up and down the river, that people would come on the other side, you know, and uh, you'd talk to them, but, so it was pretty connected, you know. You, you could get down this area from both sides of the embankment here. But it's been hours and hours just camping here. But uh, this right here, and kind of in front of us right here, where it's all kind of grown up right there, where the rocks are. But, try to pan up where you can see the bluff. Okay, up, up there is kind of like the bluff. And the bluff we're going to be talking about. Uh, it's going to be kind of straight up there. That is where the young man that was going to play the prank on my friend Paul and the other people camping down here, he would have been standing straight up there. Uh, probably about 40... I'd say about 40 to 50 feet above them. Here's where the story would have started on, six, well, on County Road 1651 at the east parking area, a boat ramp on 1651. This is where the second part of the Big Rock uh, Bigfoot story would have started. Uh, my friends would have been camping out my friend Paul Bess who told me a story years ago happened in like the early to mid 80s let's say between 84 to 86 and that had been I'd been at Big Rock camping and one, another guy that I knew from school I guess one of their friends from school must have heard about this camping trip so he decided he's gonna walk he's gonna walk from this area which down there we're gonna walk down here the trail is but he would have lived around here and he's gonna walk from this area heading heading east up there to road uh, to Wildcat Hollow Road but he would have started off his his walk that night probably between 9 and 9 and 10 at 9 and 11 o'clock at night you know, heading that way to try to scare my friend Paul and his other people that were camping that day or that night down there at Big Rock. But this this area right here, about where where he would have started from, and he would have made he would have started his walk to scare them. Uh -huh. All right, we are now here on the infamous Wildcat Hollow Road. I'll show you here in a second, but uh, the young the gentleman the high the high schooler that would have scared my friend and his friends where they were camping that night we uh, started off at the previous point we showed you we came up the road about uh, about 50 about 50 yards and then we had turned right on the dirt road on this dirt road I came I think it's it's a 1647 County Road 1647 it was the official name of this road but uh but it's dead, dead ends now on both on both sides of where Wildcat Hollow was but he would have had to have made this trek down this lonely stretch of dirt road that night you know to, to scare Paul and the other campers but he could have come from here and they would have come this way my my dad's in the car waiting on me he was driving me out here today but he would have come out this area and he would have continued on County Road 1647 down to Wildcat Hollow this it just it ends around with a fence right now and just and goes under water. But down around was the hollow that it was dark. It was just a road of legend around around here we grew up, especially among you know middle school and early high school ages. It's on those roads that you dare your friend to walk down at night. You know, little little small wooden bridge that you could drive off of with no guardrails that you could easily drive off of if you weren't paying attention. 
wood, deep woods on both sides. Just eerie, just a really eerie environment. But this this gentleman, he was committed to the he had been committed to that to the prank he was going to play uh, by scaring the friend by the friends camping by going down this area. So I'm just going to show you about the walk he would have had to make that night. All right, and the young man who was going to play the prank that night, he would have come. Now this is the south end of Wild Cat Hollow, County Road 1647. A hey, hey, wild cow hollow road so he would have come from come down this road right here and he would have cut through that field you see beyond beyond that fence line and cut through and picked up and I'll show you the entrance where he would have cut through around where the, the it was this was an open field back in the day and the woods are pretty much intact from where the wood line would have started we'll pick up there in a second and then after the young man would have cut through the field he would have come down through the field where you see now and hit the trail which would have entered right here the old logging roads that used to be here from the depression era era the depression era the 1920s and 30s and 40s that was a logging company and they, they made these logging trails so they that gentleman that young man back in the 80s to play that prank he would have traveled a pretty good distance i'd say about two miles to get here cutting through starting on the boat ramp of 1651 cutting through wild county road 1647 wildcat hollow road going through the the bridge the wildcat hollow bridge coming up there and cutting through the field and hitting these logging trails here. And after he would have entered the woods, he'd have come down these logging ro logging roads until he had cut through the woods somewhere about right in here. Uh, let me see here. He would have cut down through here into that brush we see now, and just kind of kind of just bushwhacked his way to the top of the bluff. There was like some footpaths, but it's kind of like overgrown like it is now. Uh, but he would have definitely kind of uh, just kind of bushwhacked after he left the, these logging trails right here. Then, then he would have got to the top of the bluff, you know, sometime in, uh, in the middle of the night or a Friday or Saturday night. Oh, as the story goes. My friend and them would be cowboy camping about right here on the sandy beach area right here you know out there and you know, over from big rock they've been about right here this is a level a gently sloping level uh sandy beach area perfect for cowboy camping which you just throw your sleeping bag down or a quilt i always did a quilt but And they would just have these sites right here and sounds of the river just gently flowing in, into the night. But they had just been sitting here, had a fire, would have a fire going about right here. And as you can see, the bluff behind us. And the trail they would have came in on. But they'd been sitting here with a fire going probably about 10, 30, 11 at night and then up above would have been where the young man that was going to scare him would have been standing he would have made that trick that i'll show i'll show you the trick the walk he would have made that night down here to scare them but my friend would have been camping and the young man would have, been, would have made his way to the top of the bluff that night. Like I said before, I believe it was a Friday or Saturday night. And I believe it was during the school year because I believe that's how he found out about it. it was them talking about it, their camping trip at school. And he would have came up the plan. I'm going to go walk down there and scare them. Well, as the stories my friend Paul would have told me and my dad, and he told to us several times throughout the years, but he would have... Uh, bring it down here he 
he would have been staying on top of that wolf. And, and my friends have been camping out here. And then he would, he started to make noises and throw rock, rocks off. And my friend and them, you know, were like thinking, what in the world is that? What's going on? You know, but uh, he would have started making some noises and stuff. But then all of a sudden my friend said it just stopped. Just like after a few, a few, a few, like a minute or two after it started, he it, it, it just said it stopped. So they're all kind of looking up above, and the rocks that was thrown down were not anything that could hurt them. You know, even though it's about 40 to 50 feet above them, it was kind of like small sticks and little pebbles coming down. And then they said they heard a noise up above them, and you know, just thinking it was someone, you know, coming down here to scare them, which, at, at which it was. They heard some noise, and then they heard the guy, on, their friend on top of the bluff start kind of yelling, hey, get me down, get me down from here, get me down, help, get me down. And they had been like really kind of going, what is going on up there? But anyway, and I'd been kind of walking around, you know, seeing what was up there, you know. How, you know, what's going on? And I just kept hearing, get me down, help, there's someone up here, there's someone up here. And then they would have gone, gone around to the side here, where there was a little side trail right here. And they would have hit back up to the woods. Probably, probably would have, I mean, not hit the trail, probably would have like kind of bushwhacked a little bit. And going up the side somewhere around here to get to the top of the bluff up there so kind of going going through there and around to try to meet their front meet the friend but then um, and then when I got up there they found their friend that lived over there on 1651 close to the boat ramp and he told them there was something up here and and he said it was big and it was throwing rocks at him and you know bigger rocks not like little pebbles and sticks but he said rocks like you know could hurt 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 that could hurt him so he was kind of scared there so they were to rush back down here from the bluff and with their, with their friend that tried to scare them, you know, with flashlights and stuff like that, looking around, uh, trying to see if they can find anything. But then he said they heard, you know, once they got their friend down, they heard like big movements, like, like a big person or a big animal moving around up there on top of the bluff. And then some more rocks, bigger rocks than what their friend was throwing, would have started coming down at them. And to be honest with you, I have no idea how long they decided to stay after that. I don't know. I just know they would have been paced up and down, kind of following along, you know, far along the bluff line right here on the trail, on the beach area in the trail that would extended, trying to see if they could see what, what it was with their flashlights up there. And so, I don't know if they come back down, got their stuff and all headed out back home. They all stayed at night, I don't know. This is a this is a story that would have happened between the years of 83 and 86. And not quite sure. And that was, I was a little bit too young to be camping down here by myself at that time. So it's just the secondhand story that, I don't know, I, I love, I've always loved that story. It just kind of, growing up, you always thought the area that you lived was so boring and, you know, nothing exciting ever happened. But when I heard, first heard that story, it just captured my imagination. And it's all, you know, all because of Big Rock right here. I mean, 
this is a place to share campfire stories for if anything weird was going to happen to you or anything remotely spooky going to happen to you it happened right here because at night it you know you could hear coyotes around and you know animals but you could hear the distance of the pit cars going over the bridge at 278 and the gently rolling river but this is where it would have it would have happened and i wish my friend paul was still alive today to i'd love to have brought him down here to kind of get him to recant what he said happened to him then like i said you know as the story grew over the years it morphed into like yes there was definitely a bigfoot down there because there's something big and coming through the woods but nothing was ever seen it was just and all that was i was told was that something was up there that scared their friend that tried to scare them and something threw some rocks at them and that was really all i remember of the story i wish i had more details and, you know just kind of gently show you a little bit more of the river and get never get tired of looking at it kind of one more view of big rock there but yeah that little sandy beach area just in front of you was where all that would happen in the bluff above now i uh, hope you enjoyed the story like i said it was a second hand story can i do i know if it's 100 percent true you know it's like a campfire legend you know like the cropsy legend or something or you know that you see on horror movie, cheesy horror movies from the 80s about summer camps and stuff you know they always had a, a scary story to tell and it happened to be true just i believe my friend paul i believe something like that i believe something happened to him that night i believe that you know they got may got rocks thrown at them and stuff but was it as the story grew over the years was it bigfoot i don't know I, to be honest with you i don't necessarily believe in bigfoot i would i would, I would like to be proven wrong but uh you know i just gotta have more evidence of a bigfoot but uh i don't know as a kid i wanted to believe in those things you know i wanted to believe there was something greater than just the normal everyday life and just looking down here at the camping spot i, I wanted to believe in the scary stories because it brought excitement to the it brought, it brought excitement to the world you know it was like not everything you know everything can be explained away you know by adults you know as a young kid as a young adolescent you know between ages 10 to 13 you feel like the whole world just gets explained i mean is explained away by everything you know there's no mystery to the world and that story brought a sense of mystery a sense of excitement a sense of spookiness to this area that we spent so much so much time at that i wish i would have given anything that if i could have come down here and camped with them that night and experienced that then i could tell you firsthand if it, how much of it was true and not but like i said that story if i if i had to guess i'd say about it lies between truth and legend that some things have been embellished over the years i think the core the core story is true but i believe there's been some embellishments where you know the bigfoot legend the bigfoot legend grew out of grew out of that story and then other people started like hear seeing and hearing stuff i mean that was for me that was the earliest story i've heard of the bigfoot the duck river bigfoot and and that was the one that really captured my imagination we, and we and then the story spread while, like wildfire through the through the through our little, little community and kids at school that live close to our community there's sister big rock but uh i'm just going to show you the rapids down here as i'll make my way out of here but no the story just grew and grew and whereas i'd say that happened in like 83 84 between 83 and 86 those like three or four years then 
the story was still the duck the duck river bigfoot story was still making the rounds even as far as up as 1990 and 91. that was a story in 91 we was all down here camping where we went to go to the store or something the girl go roll somebody's yard and one, one guy didn't want to go he wanted to stay down here by the fire and we got back he was uh at my friend owen's house with a shotgun uh, pacing the driveway saying there's something down there there's something down there he had heard the, he had heard the bigfoot legends too laughed at him but when he was down, down here camping by himself in the middle of the night he heard something and he got spooked and now he probably heard a coyote or bobcat or something like that going to the woods but you know i don't want to do i don't want to discount anybody you know discounting by story i just want to i just want to share what they told me now just kind of fun little stories to share like i said they lie they lie somewhere between truth and legend you know at what is true i know the camping story i know the camping part is true i know the and i know the friend trying to scare him was true but he never did you know always i got him to tell me a few times over the years even like even in the early 2000s tell me that story again but my friend paul didn't remember as much because he was sick with a brain oh, a degenerative brain brain disorder and so his memory wasn't quite as sharp but he always said it was true even as late as like 2004 when i last asked him about it you know so for 20 years he always said and he told my dad about it my dad has heard that story from from him i just wish i wish i could have brought him down here today and got him to share that story with y'all firsthand but so that's the story of the the legend of the bigfoot duck river bigfoot or the bigfoot of duck river you've heard of boggy creek the boggy creek monster in the movie the legend of boggy creek but there is the legend of the duck river bigfoot or the big rock bigfoot thank you so much see you next time